from 2010 to 2020, I have made the most ridiculous financial mistakes ever. And I'm going to share with you my worst financial decisions as well as my best financial decisions. And hopefully you'll be able to learn from my mistakes and my wins. And you'll be able to see the progress that I've been able to make towards making better financial decisions throughout the decade. Hi, I'm Shane of The Wealth Five, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. Financial reviews are such a great thing to do and now that it's the start of a new decade, it's a really great time to review all of your mistakes and all of your wins throughout the entire decade. And so I recently did this video where I talked about my worst purchases ever. And if you watched that video, you know that I had over $200,000 of terrible purchases. But now I'm gonna talk about some of my wins because I did not talk about my wins. And the great thing is that you can see how some of my mistakes have led to really great wins throughout the decade and I've been able to make lots of financial progress. So let's get into my my worst and best financial decisions of the decade. So I'm gonna set the stage for you just a little bit. So in 2010, I was 22 years old. I was in grad school living in New York City and I was working part-time at Urban Outfitters. So as you can imagine, I was super duper broke. It actually one of the most expensive cities in the United States. So you can imagine that I didn't have a lot of money, but yeah, I was over here making tons of financial mistakes. So one of my worst financial mistakes that I made in 2010, actually started out in 20, 2009, but it carried over into 2010. I could have probably nipped it in the bud before 2010 came around, but that financial mistake was taking out student loans to the tune of how much I took out. So if you know anything about my story, you know that I was a Bill and Melinda Gates scholar. And so with that scholarship, I got pretty much all of my education paid for if I wanted to. So I got my undergraduate degree for free. And then for grad school, there was a cap on how much money Gates would pay for my education. I believe it was $35,000. But I went to Columbia University to get my master's in public health. And my thought process back then as a 22 year old was that I don't have any student loans so why don't I just go ahead and take out some and invest in myself. And while I don't think that that is a terribly wrong decision, but the thing is I actually had money at my disposal. I had about $35,000 that actually did cover all of my tuition but it did not cover my living expenses. And so I took out student loans to cover my personal costs. And that's totally fine because part of your cost of attendance includes your living because a lot of people aren't able to work while they're going to school and things of that nature. But I should have, because I was one of those people that had the ability to work while I was in my graduate program, I should have worked a little bit more. But I think one of the things that was in my mind was that it was a financial recession. It was hard to get jobs at that time in 2010. And I just figured, you know, I'm gonna take out these student loans to cover my apartment and any of my other living expenses while I was getting my graduate degree. So I ended up taking it out in that year, probably like, $30,000 of student loan. And that's really what set me into having debt in the first place. And so I would say that it was one of my worst financial decisions because I should have thought about it more. And I'm not saying that student loans are terrible and no one should ever take them out. That is not my stance. If you watch any of my videos, you know that it's not my stance. I just personally think that I should have taken a little bit more time and thought more about how I was going to pay for my living expenses in New York City while I was going to graduate school. And then I probably would have taken out less student loans. So that is the reason why this is one of my worst financial decisions of 2010. And then one of the best financial decisions that I made or one of the best things that I did finance wise in 2010 was paying off my car. I had a 2007 RAV4 and I paid it off while I was in grad school. I made a lump sum payment 
to pay off my car and I was really excited about that but you know the crazy thing is I actually did not even have my car <laughs> while I was in grad school so I bought this car in 2007 while I was still in undergrad and then when I decided to go to New York for grad school I realized that it just wasn't going to make sense to have my car there because New York has really great public transportation and I would have had to pay for parking to you know have my car in New York City and I probably wasn't going to drive it that much anyway so I decided that I was going to send my car back to my hometown of Miami Florida and so I didn't even have my car with me for those two years while I was living in New York City in grad school but it was such a great thing that was the first car that I ever paid off and I paid it off and I was and I paid it off in three years so it was a great thing that I was able to pay off my car but since 2010, I made some other terrible financial decisions that really just negated the fact that I paid off my car in 2010. But in 2010, it was a highlight of my finances <laughs> in 2010. Now let's fast forward to 2019, the end of the decade. So in 2019, I was 32 years old. I was now living in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was working at the Centers for Disease Control. And I also was working on the side, doing many side hustles, which if you've been on the channel for a while, you know all the side hustles that I was doing. And I was in a new state of mind because I was trying to pay off debt and pay it off super duper fast. The worst financial decision of 2019 was from switching jobs. So at the beginning of 2019, I started off as a postdoctoral fellow and I decided that I wanted to one, take on new responsibilities, do something different, learn something different, be able to grow my skill set. And I also wanted to be able to make more money. And with more money, I wanted to be able to have more benefits and perks. So as a postdoctoral fellow, I didn't have any um, vision or dental insurance. I didn't have access to a 401k or 403b. And I just didn't have a lot of the perks that comes with a traditional job. And so I decided that I was gonna switch from my postdoctoral fellowship to another job that would offer me an increase in salary, the ability to do new things, and also be able to get some of those benefits. And so it ended up being a bad decision only because I moved from something that was pretty stable. I could have stayed in that position for up to another three years, five years total. So I could have stayed in my original position, but then I chose to switch to something that was a contract and limited time position anyway. I was only gonna be able to stay in that position for a year, but then it turns out that I was even in the position for a lot less than a year and ended up losing that job. And so it ended up being a bad financial decision because it resulted in a lot of lost income for me. And so I won't say that overall it was a really bad decision because I wanted growth. I wanted to do new things and be able to explore new opportunities. So in that respect, it wasn't bad, but from a financial perspective, it had a lot of ramifications on my finances. So that's why it falls into the worst financial decisions of 2019. Now onto a more positive note, the best financial decision of 2019 was paying off my car. So yes, you heard that right. I pay off another car. <laughs> so it's not the same car that I paid off in 2010. This is a whole nother car that I paid off in 2019. And yes, you might be thinking like, what? How did you end up paying off a whole nother car <laughs> in the same decade? Yeah, it's a long story, but I paid off another car and I'm very happy that I paid off that car. I paid off my 2016 Honda Civic and I paid off in full in, in May 2019. And so the reason why it was the best financial decision is one, I was able to get out of consumer debt. And so I have no more consumer debt. The last debt that I have is my student loans and I hope to pay that off in the near future. And when I lost my job, the fact that I was able to pay off my car a month before allowed me to be in a really good position so that one, I would have transportation and then two, nobody could come and repossess my car, okay? 
So I was really glad that I took the, I guess the diligent effort to pay off my car ahead of time. Those were my best and worst financial decisions of the decade. And this decade has been played with so many bad financial decisions from buying multiple cars to getting into student loan debt to just being bad with budgeting. Just so many bad financial decisions. And a lot of them resulted from me just trying to find my way in life, trying to figure out what direction I want to go in. But as a result, I was able to figure out what I want to do and I got my finances in order and I feel like I've ended on a positive note at the end of 2019 and for the decade and I feel like this only means so much bigger and better things finance wise for me for the next decade so I'm really excited that I've been able to make a lot of changes but also the fact that I've gone through a lot of those mistakes have really shaped who I am now and a lot of my financial behaviors and the best thing that you can do is just learn from your financial behaviors. So just take a moment, if you haven't already, just reflect on the last decade and the last year and think about what have you done wrong and what have you done right and figure out how you can do even more right moving forward. I hope you really appreciated this video and that you're subscribed and I hope to see you in a future video. And check out these videos here while you're at it.